If the future of humanity depended on who you are and what you do, who would you be and what would you do? There's a lot about Buckminster Fuller. He's a legendary American polymath and architect. In 1922, when Buckminster Fuller was in his early 20s, his daughter died, a four-year-old daughter, of an illness that he connected to the kind of substandard, damp uh, apartment that they lived in in Chicago that he actually helped build. So he took that death um, pretty hard and basically committed his life to um, re-engineering housing as a tool to alleviate human suffering. So in 1927, about four years later, he introduced the first version of the Dymaxion House. 20 years later, in the early 50s, um, he invented the geodesic dome. You know, the shape, of course, it's geometry. It goes back before humans discovered it. But Buckminster Fuller created the math that allowed us to, to build geodesic domes. And it was really the study of like um, snowflakes and uh, seashells and different spiraling patterns that became the inspiration for the geodesic dome. And now we know the geodesic dome is essentially the flower of life in 3D, right? It's this ancient pattern that goes back 5,000 plus years through different societies all around the world, these intersecting circles. And Buckminster Fuller called the domes that he built in the 70s and 80s um, wooden spaceships. You know, it was like the right shape, but the wrong material. And he really predicted that it would be 30 to 50 years until the material science advanced and the manufacturing technology advanced before, you know, the whole earth would be covered in uh, uh, geodesic homes. In really the, the late 90s, a really legendary material scientist, Professor Rustam Roy, kind of defined a new family of materials that were ceramics that fire at room temperature. He called them chemically bonded ceramics. So when you have all the properties of a ceramic and it's crystalline with covalent and ionic bonding, yet a lot of the properties of a cement and a lot of the properties of an epoxy and that it bonds to metal and to wood and to itself, it's a completely new family of materials. And it really enables um, the homes that we'll see on Earth in 100 or 200 years. So I'm super grateful to Buckminster Fuller and to all of the different visionaries in the world. It's humbling to put the, the material science and the manufacturing technology together to basically continue Buckminster Fuller's mission. It's a true future, you know, it's like a vast future potential that is speaking to a lot of different visionaries who are working to, to facilitate our transition to that, um, that future. <laughs>